Here then, we're going to take a look at something which is quite important to be aware of, and which has actually received a small mention here and there along the way already, but we haven't stopped to talk about specifically, and that is the issue of pivot points. Every item in layout has a pivot point, and it is its action center. It is the spatial point within the object's own space that counts as its zero, as well as, of course, as the point in the item's parent space that the recorded keyframe values refer to. What it is not, necessarily at least, is the object's center, since its location within the object space can be anywhere. And of course, in terms of rotation, it is the point of pivot from where all rotations come. For objects which are brought in from Modeler, then the pivot point is Modeler's own 0, 0, 0. Therefore, an object such as this will have its pivot point thus, at the point on the object which was 0 in Modeler. Now, we do have here some tools for working with pivots in layout, such as the record pivot rotation we've already seen, as well as its analog, the set pivot rotation. I should point out the record pivot rotation that you see here. This is the legacy record pivot rotation. You'll notice the one that's used on the menus is labeled as the BT rec pivot. The reason being that when you want to set your own menus and look this up in configure menus, then that is the actual name of the command. This legacy record pivot rotation is only really good for one operation. So if you rotate an item and record its pivot, and then you try and do it again, it starts to go wrong, especially if you then parent the item to something and so on. Hence, we generally use this one now. We also have the move and rotate pivot point tools. The move pivot point tool is pretty straightforward, really. You just move your pivot somewhere. And then when you switch back to move and rotate, you can see that your pivot point has been moved. Rotate pivot point basically gives you the option of rotating the pivot here. What you'll notice, of course, is when we switch to the rotate tool, our axes are all now completely off. Originally, of course, they were zero. This thing was unrotated. So it's maintained our world rotation or our parent space rotation. It's just rotated the pivot point itself. You'll notice, again, this is analogous to just using the set pivot rotation. Or, if we set it to 0, 0, 0 now, rotating the pivot is pretty much the same as had we originally rotated the entire object like this and then hit record pivot rotation. It's also possible here in Modeler to use the pivot tools to move and reposition the pivot of an item as it is saved. And as you can see, that object then brought into layout has the pivot point assigned to it in Modeler. The tools for manipulating pivots in this way give us a few options for things, such as when working with mechanical characters, robots and the like. You can break the model up into different layers in Modeler, so you have each of these solid pieces as a single object layer, and then reposition their pivot points either in Modeler or Layout, rotate them as necessary, and then have these model layers linked up using motion control for IK or whatever else performing your motion control on the object layer parts themselves, doing away with the need for any bones or weight maps or anything else. You won't, however, see us doing that much in these guides here. Generally, it's a bit more fiddly to do, and it's usually much quicker overall to just either create block weight maps for the individual parts and use normal bone deformations to take each part along, or still have the parts in layers and then just parent each one to the appropriate bone, or of course even further just use nulls and parent the parts to those nulls. These technical details and this idea of using individual object parts that can be hooked up into a motion system, simply by virtue of where their pivots are, does bring us in nicely to some of the more conceptual stuff about using pivots creatively. First of all, there's the use of bones and such like, nulls of course. Bones of course having their pivot here at their root point. Essentially all the use of bones and nulls as rigging tools are, are just ways of adding pivot points to things, manipulating pivot points. You simply stick them at the point where you want something to pivot from, and then you effectively take the part and you parent it to the controller. You parent it to this new pivot point. That's what a large part of rigging is. When you use bones and weight maps in a character, all you're essentially doing is creating or defining a part on a vertex by vertex basis by assigning all of the vertices to a map, and then taking a special kind of auxiliary pivot point that we call a bone, which has an attribute drop-down allowing you to parent those named vertices to that bone. That essentially is what you're doing when you skin something. Of course, bones also give you this nice visual layout of where it is that you're placing them in something, which is a lot quicker than going back and forth with the move pivot tool and recording all of their pivots sets them back to zero and gets those base alignments as you're after them, which makes them pretty quick and easy to work with. 
So we get this first issue of pivots being essentially your rigging workflow, however it is that you choose to approach using them. And then the next point, which is so important to rigging, which is where they're placed and how they work and operate against one another, how their spaces translate down, the hierarchies work and so on and how it is that these things lead to creative control. We saw earlier, for instance, the beginnings of a reverse foot setup for an IK leg, and how it is that that allows us to pivot from these different points of the foot, where it contacts the ground during different kinds of motions. The IK, of course, is really operating from the ankle position here. But since we want our actual movement and points of contact come from these external pivot points, we simply just use parenting and hierarchy, to shift and adjust the pivots for us. This of course all aids the animation workflow and consequently the design and layout of your pivot setup is an important aspect of rigging altogether. How exactly you choose to deal with this, whether you want to try playing around with moved and rotated pivots for things, that's fine. There are of course any number of possible ways to do all of this stuff technically with the tools that are available. But you will often find that the quickest and easiest is just to scatter a few nulls around, parent them together, use some bones and weight maps. It's less fiddly and it is what we will be seeing done pretty much throughout the entirety of this course. One thing that would of course be helpful would be if we could somehow animate these pivot points. Not so much their rotation, because as we see that's to do with the resting of things and returning them to zero, but certainly in terms of their position. Whilst there's no way of doing this in Lightwave directly, and there's no tool for it, it is possible with a little bit of constraints to set up little hierarchies that can mimic certain things, such as here, where we create a null as a pivot point which we can move away from an item here, the camera leaving it in place, and then rotate from that pivot point, shift it somewhere else, and do the same again. Behind most of the complex fancy rigs that do wonderful stuff and make posing nice and simple and intuitive for animators are often clever little systems that do things like this, letting you get this kind of variety of control to things.